Hello, I'm Faith from Fair Nanny's Bookbook, and today I'm going to be doing some graphic novel recommendations. Now, I have quite a few to get through, most of them are series, so I will just show you the first one and talk a little bit about it, and then just tell you the names and show you the covers of the other ones if you're so inclined to take on the series. Most of them are DC at the moment because I've been more focused on my DC recently than I have on my Marvel. I have some independent graphic novels as well, mostly put out by Image Comics. We are going to start off these graphic novel recommendations with Batgirl of Burnside, Volume 1. Um, this is a new, well there's not a new story arc anymore, but this was a new story arc when New 52 was around. Um, and it's about uh, Barbara Gordon getting back into the world of being Batgirl. Um, she has a little chip in her spine that's able to help her walk um, after, you know, <coughs> the Joker incident, which we will not speak of. This has become very um, 21st century, there's a lot in here about um, her becoming a new social media vigilante. She's moved across the city, um, across the water from Gotham into a new city called Burnside. Um, and she is the one and only vigilante of Burnside. Um, but because, you know, in this day and age we've all got for, uh, cameras on our phones, there she gets taken lots of snaps and like hashtag Batgirl of Burnside, new vigilante in Burnside, blah blah blah, which means a whole new wave of villains has been coming at her. Um, the artwork is amazing and the storyline is very, very good. I thoroughly enjoyed this uh, new start to Barbara Gordon as Batgirl. Volume 2, Batgirl of Burnside is called Family Business and Volume 3, Batgirl of Burnside is called Minefields. Um, I believe there's a volume 4 but I haven't actually picked that up yet. Most of these do have other volumes in them but these are just the ones that I've picked up and that I've read. I do plan on continuing the rest of the series that I have, that I will be showing you in this video. Moving on to Harley Quinn. This one is called Harley Quinn Hot in the City, Volume 1. This is the New 52 uh, version, so it came out a while ago. There is, of course, the Rebirth version, but I haven't picked that up yet. That's on my list. Again, it's about a new start for a character. Um, Harley Quinn has moved out of Gotham and away from the Joker and the Bat and all of that, and she has moved into Coney Island, and she has taken over residence in kind of like circus freak wax museum of madness. It's very fitting for Harley. She finds a load of new friends and just mayhem ensues and it's great, it's adorable. You get to see a little bit of Harley and Ivy as well, which is really nice. Ivy comes to visit a couple of times and that's always great to see, so. Next one is Harley Quinn Vengeance Unlimited. This is just um, a few Harley Quinn stories put all together in graphic novel form. It's not like it takes them from different volumes of stuff, I believe. Um, and it's just like the best of the Harley Quinn, like the origin story, what she did after that, and then a few um, on her own Harley runs. But you get to see a lot more of the background of the character and how she became who she was, and she does a little bit of psychiatric stuff which is what she was doing obviously before she met the Joker and that's how she met the Joker and so on and so forth so this one's a good one to pick up if you want to get into Harley or if you want to see a little bit more of her background. This is Batman Year One by Frank Miller. This is about, this is the story of how Batman uh, first put on a cape, his first um, year as the Batman, his first case that he solved um, and so on and so forth. It's a really good read. It's stylized very, um, the artwork is very 1980s, it's not as colourful as what we have now in the graphic novels but it is a very interesting and good read that I suggest people who want to get into Batman should pick up. The next one and one of my personal favourites is The Knight and the Squire which is basically the British version of Batman. The Knight is the British version of Batman and the Squire is the British version of the Robin, um, the Robin, of Robin. Um, the sidekick is a girl, which is obviously not unheard of for the American Batman, but isn't what isn't like of the norm. It's very satirical, it's very sarcastic, it's um, extremely British, extremely cheesy, very like 
70s and 80s um, like cheese fest. Uh, it's really funny. Um, you get to see the you get to see like the British side. If if Batman grew up in Britain, this is what he would have become. I don't want to pick it up for the Night in the Sky, which I suggest you do anyway. You definitely want to pick this up for the British version of the Joker. We have Justice League Dark in the Dark, Volume One. Um, this series is based around John Constantine, Zatanna, um, all of those kind of characters that you don't get to see a lot or often in the kind of magical realm of things. There's some hell demons and some big old bad beastie boys that come into it. There's a, a crazy sorceress wreaking havoc that not even Superman or Wonder Woman could take care of. Um, and they have to call in John Constantine and Zatanna. Um, so you get to see a lot of them and their magic, which you don't normally get to see and I'm very happy. Uh, that we do get to see that because Zatanna is one of the characters that has a good story and has a good backstory um, but you don't get to see a lot of her in the comics so I'm happy that uh, Justice League Dark is that. Justice League Dark Volume 2, The Books of Magic. Um, obviously it's just a, a lead on from the last Justice League Dark Volume. Uh, more sorcery, more John Constantine, sarcasm, British wit, more Zatanna kicking his ass, which is great, um, you know, a lot more magic, um, I believe you get to see a lot more dead man in this one. Now we have Batwoman, Elegy, this is like the prequel to the first volume of the series of Batwoman, uh, Batwoman, sorry, the new 52 Batwoman. I am so glad that they made a series for Batwoman, she is a character that you don't get to see a lot of, who's come to light recently, um, in the past few years, she was in Bad Blood, the animated uh, film for Batman as well. Um, and she's got her own comic book series, uh, well, her own graphic novel comic book series um, in the New 52, where you get to find out a lot about Kate Kane and her background and, you know, the things that happen, things that don't happen, about her mum, you know, all of her family and her background, about her life outside of being Batwoman, as an LGBT character, as a gay woman, you know, joining the army, being asked to leave the army, the, you know, all of all of that you get to read about in these um, volumes. And it was, it was a really interesting read, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I'm really glad that one of my favourite characters has been put into graphic novel form. Because before, I want to say 2012, 2010 maybe, you didn't hear or see a lot about that woman, which was a shame, but I am glad that she is around more um, these days. Batwoman Volume 1, Hydrology. Batwoman Volume 2, To Drown the World. Batwoman Volume 3, World's Finest. There is a Volume 4, I believe. I'm not sure about a Volume 5. I think 52 stopped after Volume 4. Um, so I will be getting that last one and hopefully keeping up to date with everything that she does in the new Rebirth series that we have coming up. Now moving on to some DC Universe Rebirth, which is obviously the newest well, not obviously, you might not know this. This is the newest um, story arc, storyline, you know, revamping of the universe that DC are doing. To kick us off, I'm going to start with what my brother threw me into the world with, which was Rebirth Nightwing, uh, Volume 1, Better Than Batman. Now, I started to read this, and I completely forgot about what was happening in Dick's storyline um, from the New 52, where he, like... They're obviously spoilers. Um, he died, but he didn't die. He faked his own death, became an agent of Spiral, um, came back to the world, Knight of Court of Owls, you know, all of this craziness was happening. Um, and then we see in this one him talking and getting revenge and, you know, being, be, becoming Nightwing again, as well as Dick Grayson, which is really good to see. Um, he's trying to get back on his feet. Um, we see a lot of Damian Wayne in this series which is really nice to see his brotherly connection with Dick Grayson. Um, we get to see a little bit of Batman in this series as well. goes through um, the next two volumes that are out and that I've read. Um, you get to see a lot more of Damian Wayne. Um, and just like his 
relationship with Dick and how Dick had him as a Robin when um, Bruce was passed away and, he, and Dick was Batman and um, the kind of relationship they developed not only as brothers but as partners. Um, you get to sit, see Dick try and settle down, try and patch things up with Barbara. Um, you know, Dick mean Dick Grayson basically. Doing volume two, Back to Bloodhaven. My personal favourite out of the Nightwings so far, Nightwing Must Die, Volume 3. Um, not only because of the cover, with Damien Wayne here, look at him, so cute, um, but the general storyline of this one is... It's really good. <laughs> it's just, it's really good. Red Hood and the Outlaws, Volume 1, Dark Trinity. It's basically, it consists of Red Hood, Bizarro and Artemis. Three characters that I knew I liked, but I didn't think I could like as much, and I didn't know I needed them all together until now. Um, I've always loved Jason Todd. Red Hood has always been a character that has um, had a special place in my heart. Um, Artemis, I know I always liked, but I've never seen her storyline this way. But yet, to see a couple of inter interactions between Bruce and Jason. Um, you get to learn a lot more about Artemis's history and a little bit about Jason's history. You basically get to see Bizarro start off and then just work his way through uh, the series. There are only two volumes right now that we have that I've read um, and the second one's my personal favourite because it delves a little bit more into Artemis's background and how she became who she is and why she was looking for what she was looking for. Um, in this one Red Hood is trying to do good, um, but he doesn't like trying to do it Bruce's way, he wants to do it his own way, um, which is why he's cast as like the anti-hero, like he's a, he's not a hero, he's not a villain, he's just kind of a, he's an outlaw. Red Hood and the Outlaws Volume 2, who is Artemis, you get to see a little bit of um, Wonder Woman, a little bit of um, like Amazonian backstory and history, um, a little bit of a little bit more of Jason's backstory and history as well, which is always interesting. And their fight to keep Bizarro um, humanized, as it were, with a moral compass. So that one's a good read. A Norman Volume One Lies, where Diana is basically just losing her shit. Um, she can't remember which life is real, which life is a different life that she's having memories of. Um, you get to see Steve Trevor in this, you get to see a little bit of um, some characters that you didn't think would come into the story but have come into the story, like Cheetah um, and a couple of people that Diana knew from that past which you find out a little bit more about in Volume 2, um, which was my favourite uh, volume of the three. Volume 2, Wonder Woman Year 1, which I said was my favourite of the three Wonder Woman rebirths. Um, you get to see a lot more of Diana's backstory. Um, this is basically a flashback episode um, where you get to find out a lot more about her backstory, about her life on Dunscara, um, about what happened, how they chose her as the champion, about how Steve ended up on the what happened when Diana came to uh, like Man's World for the first time. Um, and it's not depicted as the same as all of the other times we've seen it um, in various different stories um, but this one is is a very good volume um, I do suggest you pick up this one and run it's great woman volume 3 the truth uh, by the way all of the artwork in all of the rebirth series is like fantastic to look at it's just well done basically the DC because they have some fantastic artists running their comic friends at the moment a little bit more Wonder Woman this isn't actually a new 52 or a rebirth this is just um, a random single run of Wonder Woman that DC have decided to do and it came out I want to say around 2012 um, and it's called Wonder Woman Odyssey this is by far my favourite storyline of Wonder Woman's um, that I have ever read. She is about 16 or 17 um, 
somehow finds herself and all of her sisters um, in, I want to say New York, in America anyway, and, uh, and she has to like go on a quest, an odyssey to find out who she is, why she's Wonder Woman, it's a lot um, darker than the stuff we've been seeing, um, she wears leather jackets and she's like very teenage rebellion, which is why I think I like it so much. Um, and then you just have Wonder Woman Odyssey Volume 2, so. And another one of my favourite uh, DC runs is Bombshells Volume 1 Enlisted. This is basically like the 1950s and 60s, all of the female superheroes and vigilantes and all of that get together and they all come together and kick ass and it's fantastic and they're all adorably cute and most of them are LGBT. Um, and it's just, it's a brilliant read. You get to see a lot of Ivy and um, Harley, you get to see a lot of Wonder Woman, you get to see a lot of Batgirl, Batwoman, Zatanna, Catwoman, you know, everyone's in it and they're all amazing. <laughs> and volume two is called Allies. Um, I completely forgot to mention, um, you have Supergirl and Stargirl and you know, it's not just um, America's, um, Americans, you have, because um, it's, it's going on around the time of World War, Two, I believe, so you have some, some Russians and some Germans and some spies playing into a parts of it. You have a lot of, you know, the Batgirl, Batwoman um, side of it um, as well, so that's always interesting to read about. And this is one of my favourite series that I'm going to try and catch up with pretty soon, so I do hope if you pick this up, you enjoy it. If you have read any of those or you plan to read any of those, please let me know in the comments. Thank you for sticking with me. Look out for Eddie's video at the beginning of next week. I have been Faith and Faye and Elizabeth Knook. See you next week. Bye.